We start with the, with the word spirits. Now, this is an area of belief, one of the beliefs in African religion. We have already talked about God quite a bit. That's a, the central belief in African religion. Other beliefs include the belief of life continuing after death, beyond death. People experience them or think of them and some have visions of spirits. But other spirits are also mentioned in connection with just imagination. People have a fiction, put it that way, fiction which features spirits. Just like in fiction, written in fiction, you feature particular characters and so on, but since they did not have written uh, communication, it was all oral communication and spirits would be featured very much in uh, uh, or the word for spirits would be featured very much in stories fictitious but in stories and also another way of using that term is by talking about spirits you are also talking about society about community and you don't want to name individuals technically spirits are the remainder of persons who have died or the ongoing of life after death. That's uh, one of the main features of African religion that uh, um, death is not the end of, of the person, but that life goes on uh, in form of spirits. Now, these spirits are not just of ancestors, so to speak, parents and grandparents. No, they are spirits of everyone who has died, persons who have died. And that's why, to come to the word ancestor, I do not use that word because ancestor, it's very limiting. It's limiting because people talk about the departed, whether they were brothers or, or neighbors or, or old people, grand grandfathers and so on. They talk about that and not just ancestors. Now, I have coined in order to, to, to make this expression a bit more clear, I have coined the term the living dead. The living dead, living and then dash. The living dead instead of ancestors. Now, and but the living dead are a particular part of the spirits. There are spirits of the unknown dead. And those are not part of the family. They are sometimes, if they possess people, then people feel they are sick. You know, they feel troubled by spirits of 
completely unknown. And those are not living dead. The living dead are those who have died in the last two to five generations back. They would still be known by names because some of the people who are living may still know those persons who died a long back ago. So they are living in the memories of those who are alive and also according to the beliefs that people, that death does not finish the person. Now, people have relations with the living dead because if they appear, people will know them by name. And therefore, they are known by name within the family. And that's why people have respect to their, to their dead grandfathers or dead grandmothers, dead grand uncles, and so on and so forth. The older you become, the more respect you should earn. <laughs> you should earn in the community. So this kind of uh, talk about uh, ancestor, how in some time they were called ancestor worship. That's rubbish because it is simply showing, ah, yes, this is my grandfather whom I knew, now he has appeared, ah yes, and you have to show respect. Or even if he has not appeared, remembering them is very important. And that's why they may pour out a bit of beer or milk or water on the ground and say, oh, you, my grandfather, so and so, take also share with with this it's a fellowship kind of fellowship share with the food we are eating you see uh, because you don't you don't uh, let the old man even if they are very old you don't let them die you are the children are the ones who look after them who take care of them when they they are old so you that that continues symbolically symbolically people know that when they put a little bit of um, grain on the floor and say so so take your share they know they, that they are not there in a physical way it is purely symbolic and when they see like flies come to eat there they feel happy yeah the food is being eaten by you are the food for our our grand old old grand well ancestors is being eaten they feel happy so this is the whole uh, picture about talk about ancestors and about spirits now spirits now here we get into some very complicated area of African religion and African life, namely the question of health. Sicknesses, accidents, and de finally death itself. Now, naturally, people have occupied themselves with the combating sickness with um, making sure people are healthy. I mean, like everywhere in the world, health is very important. <clears throat> now, one of the beliefs in connection with sickness is that every kind of sickness, and that means ultimately uh, death, is caused is generated by a being normally 
the being would be within the community. <laughs> and that's where witchcraft and witches come into the picture. They are the ones who initially will be blamed for the sickness of, of the child or the sickness of, a, uh, of an old person or the, the sickness, even the sickness of cattle or poor production in the fields. People ask, who has caused it? Who? Not what? I mean, yes, what, naturally, what um, you, you can say. Yes, uh, the person fell down and hurt himself and so on. Okay. But who caused that person to fall down? Who caused my child to be bitten by a mosquito and get malaria? Because you may say, you may explain Western uh, medicine will explain that yes, the, the, it's malaria caused by by a mosquitoes, mosquito bite, and then the persons will say, why in a, in a school dormitory where there are perhaps sleeping in one dormitory there may be ten, fifteen children. Why is it that my child got bitten by the mosquito and got sick? Why not all the others? And that's where then people will say, this was caused by so and so. So and so sent the mosquito to bite my child. Why? Or because we are having a bit of quarrel with, an, with one another. Or because the parents of the parents feel jealous that my child is so bright, always comes to number um, in examinations, number one, two, three. Whereas the, the child of this other woman may be the last on the list, number 25. And the parents of the 25 child point will feel jealous. So it goes the argument. Will feel jealous and therefore they will send a mosquito to bite the, the child who is always number one, number two in class. Now, this is very simple exp um, explanation, but that's how often the mentality goes. And the mentality in communities is so inbuilt, even of, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, even of people educated in um, universities and so on. Even among pastors and among deep Christians and, uh, you know, educated, this still comes into play. That is something an outsider, well, to, sorry to use that word, but outsider to mean uh, anyone who is not born within that community, speaks that the language of that community, shares in the world view of that community. Anyone who is not from within the total of, of that community will not grasp, will not even know, you see. And that's why, for example, in the colonial days, witchcraft was made punishable. Accusations of witchcraft were made punishable by the government. But of course, the people had their own ways of punishing the witches. And they made that one of the laws against witchcraft. But that doesn't, that doesn't, uh, remove this idea. Okay, 
May I mention that some of the politicians, some, some of the politicians who we have today in every African country, I would say, consult the traditional uh, medicine persons, the traditional um, treatment, treatment of misfortune, treatment of accidents, treatment of sicknesses, and also those treatments included giving something to bring good fortune. Now, some of the politicians are said, and uh, I mean, I've known some of these politicians, are said to go to the traditional healer, the medicine persons, to get things, to get, uh, what is the English word, to get... Uh, um, an astrological prediction? Yes, to get that kind of prediction. Okay. But not 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 astrological the way it is done in the mm -hmm. West, but they have their method of predicting and putting, giving you something which you can take in order for the prediction to come true. <laughs> you see? Mm -hmm. And uh, so they go, they go there, especially at night, and they carry with them, even in houses of parliament, they carry with them some of these uh, um, objects, you see, they hide them. And uh, so because of this whole mentality about the spiritual world, that it's very present and that in some ways through the spiritual world you can do harm or good, you see. Harm for the people who are then accused of being witch witches or accused of using witchcraft. But some of those who accuse them of witchcraft are also at the same time people who will go secretly and get charms yeah that's the word i wanted get charms either to carry on their body or they are it there's are, um cut or cut a bit on the skin and where the blood comes out the the doctor, the traditional doctor, wraps the charm there. You see? Well, I've I've done a lot of this uh, investigation of uh, treatment, and I've attended the sessions of these people giving treatment to uh, to uh, those who go to them, and so on, and so so. Anyway, this is going on all the time among most educated and least educated in according to our traditional western education it is so deep in the, our thinking our african world view mentality and action you as i said an outsider will not grasp the depth and the impact of this area of African life. And that is in the area where very much the idea of spirits come in. Because those who give that kind of treatment, that traditional doctors, may also use spirits to bring either problems or fortune okay so they go and get this kind of well treatment with some of which may involve 
um, spirits other, other um, but mainly the charms are things that are concrete I've seen many charms and even like uh, <laughs> if you look at my book which um, oh where is it I have a picture somewhere I don't quite I can't quite remember on what page where I there is um, um, I think I may where there is uh -huh. okay okay look for example one page 154 you will see a medicine person there and you see him wearing these uh, horns now these are animal horns where he puts some powders i mean the charm some medicines in this case if he um he would use that for for treating people med medical treatment but other other um other um, horns both small and big may be given to a person to take and keep you see to bring good luck and some of these both some educated and some non-educated politicians some keep such things with them university people keep such things with them hmm. one of the one of the things i experienced or uh, in doing my practical my practical uh, research was i went to one of these medical doctors traditional doctors to you know to observe and study how he was doing his work and i was with another friend when we started to go back to the university. A young person, when we went to the car, a young person came to the car and asked for a ride. And uh, where are you going? We asked. Oh, I'm going back to the university. <laughs> that was some time before the examinations. <laughs> And you can imagine what he wanted from this traditional uh, doctor. You see, the sp spirits of the known um, members of the family, those are not harmful. They are welcome members of the family if they appear. It is the spirits of the unknown who are feared. To that. However, let me just add one more word about that. Spirits are sometimes the personification of physical objects or personification of an animal, personification of an of um, perhaps. Uh, um, and happening uh, personification like personification of the, the wind which may blow um, dust and sort of harm people they they would then say it's the spirit you know again here we are coming very close to some of the ideas in the Old Testament you know where some things were taken in a personal way rather than today in a scientific way. 
Hmm. Well, uh, but again, these are interesting areas of reflection which uh, we cannot cover in just one conversation.